Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Crazy Lips from 2000 and The Gore from Outer Space from 2001, two Japanese genre benders that could be classified primarily as comedy horror hybrids. I'm reviewing them together because they were directed by the same man, Hirohisa Sasaki. These are probably his two most recognizable films for Western viewers, and the films themselves have references to one another, so it makes sense to review them together. So let's check them out. Crazy Lips from 2000. A girl, played by Hitomi Miwa, hires a psychic to find her missing brother who is suspected of being a serial killer, but things do not go as planned. So the opening credits use a weird kaleidoscope effect, you know you're in for something kind of weird. We open with footage of a news reporter who's standing outside of our protagonist's house, explaining the situation, you know, that her brother is suspected of murdering people. Apparently he and other reporters have just been camped out outside their house to get more information, you know, get a scoop to, uh, to, to I guess, report on. Also, the family is receiving phone calls from people who harass them because of their association with a potential murderer. So our lead character visits the psychic to help her find the real killer because she believes her brother is innocent. But the psychic and her assistant, or associate, uh, invade her household basically and take control of certain aspects. And then some Japanese FBI agents show up, led by Hiroshi Abe. So a lot of moving parts to this film. And this movie is crazy. It's, it's crazy. Virtually every genre you can think of is just tossed in here for good measure. Somehow, I think it all works under the predominant presence of black comedy, which is really the main genre of this. There's a scene where the psychic attempts to trace a phone call using her psychic abilities. There are a few creepy scenes involving seances with ghosts that have decapitated heads. At one point, a news broadcaster begins talking to our protagonist through her television set. There is incest, a legitimately entertaining martial arts sequence that comes from out of nowhere, uh, and a few scenes of violence, we'll put it that way. It's like the director just threw everything at the wall just to see what would stick. And this structure could annoy some viewers, obviously, but I thought it was an interesting and creative potpourri of different elements. It's difficult to predict where this movie is going, and it's one of the main positives. Now, the big thing that will offend some viewers is that this is kind of a borderline exploitation film in addition to everything I've already said. There's multiple assaults against women. One scene in particular is a very demented scene that I've never really seen before in a Japanese film. <laughs> Japanese exploitation film. You know, it's similar to something you might see in one of the recent Flower and Snake movies, if you've seen those. So be prepared before going into this film. Again, Crazy Lips is prim primarily a black comedy with infusions from other genres, and even the exploitation elements have a macabre humor to attached to them. So before watching this, you need to be in an adventurous mood, we'll put it that way. The pacing is deliberate for the most part, but the oddness of everything, the bizarreness of everything, is what makes it a unique experience. Also, I've always been a fan of Hitomi Miwa as an actress, but I rarely see her lead a film. She's usually in supporting roles, and she does lead Crazy Lips, so it was nice to see her get that much screen time here. And Hiroshi Abe is always entertaining, even in his limited supporting role. So, if you're in the mood for something different, and you're not easily offended, check out Crazy Lips. I enjoyed it. Now, the gore from outer space from 2001. A girl believes that her missing daughter may be linked to an invasion by otherworldly beings. Now, this film begins with a shot in outer space and some narration describing the universe as the last mystery for human beings. Then we cut to death row in a prison where a nun is talking to a woman who's awaiting execution, and the prisoner tells her story about the crazy events that led to her acts of crime. Then we go into flashback mode for most of the film, and we see her rushing to the cops to report that her daughter's been kidnapped. But when the cops investigate, it seems like uh, certain bizarre happenings are occurring around this woman and her daughter. 
And then the Japanese FBI agents from Crazy Lips show up, uh, again, with Hiroshi Abe returning. So the gore from outer space has a lot of similarities to Crazy Lips, like general weirdness and bizarreness, some of the returning actors, the returning director, uh, a genre-blending mismatch that's mostly led by black humor, a good action scene near the end that seemingly comes from out of nowhere again, etc., there are also a few direct references to Crazy Lips, since this one came out a year later. It has some direct references, which are kind of fun to spot. One difference is that the exploitation elements of Crazy Lips are not nearly as offensive in the gore from outer space. There are a few little scenes that get dodgy or dicey, but nothing excessive. There are some amusing bits in this, in this film as well. There's a ghost that actually is, like, on top of a car pointing the protagonist in the right direction to, like, find the location she's going to. There's, uh... Oh, she... Our protagonist keeps waving down, by chance, the same taxi driver, but always runs off and doesn't pay him. That, that becomes kind of a joke here. She knocks multiple people out with a metal pipe. And there's a flashback with Hiroshi Abe and Hitomi Miwa that's pretty funny as well. And then there's this bizarre doll that they keep referencing throughout the film. And the way they tie up that subplot, it's kind of ridiculous. And then as an added bonus, Kyoshi Kurosawa and Hideo Nakata have cameo appearances. So it's fun seeing some, you know, horror directors show up as actors in this film. Despite the title, there's really not much gore at all in this, even though it's called the gore from outer space. And there's also no space monster. Like, you're expecting, like, the blob or something to show up, right? It's, like, gore from outer space, but it doesn't really happen. So, if you're expecting this movie to be, like, a heartfelt homage to, like, B-grade science fiction films from the 1950s, you will be disappointed. It's not like that at all. I mean, this director is really intent on subverting expectations in both of these films. Like, the way the story plays out, very different from a lot of other movies out there. So... Overall, I would say that the gore from outer space, not quite as much fun as Crazy Lips, and it doesn't quite finish as strong as Crazy Lips, but it is entertaining enough. Uh, if you liked Crazy Lips, you may as well check this one out as well. I would recommend both movies, but only for viewers that are into, I guess, inappropriate cinema that's also kind of nutty. Movies like this are just not made that often. I mean, they're, they're definitely unique in how their stories play out, so... Both are available on DVD. I have both of the copies that I purchased fairly recently, so you'll see those in an Asian movie uh, collection update video at some point in the future. So tread cautiously, but I recommend these. And as always, I will see you next time.